Okay, I'm Nick Purdy, uh, president of Peekaboo Li Livestock Company, and we're on the Double R Ranch, which is part of the Peekaboo Livestock Company. It's adjacent to our ranch, and it's the source of our decreed water out of Silver Creek, so it's pretty important that, that we have it, known it. Uh, my great-grandparents in 1882 constructed a dam on the Silver Creek so that they could get irrigation water out of it. Fishing on Silver Creek became pretty important. In the 70s, 80s, 90s, we suddenly realized the importance of it and how valuable a resource it was. And the pond had accumulated silt for 100 years. The creek had started to deteriorate. It was getting so that it had become a heat sink. Temperature rise from one end of the pond to the other was over 10 degrees and then that hot water would go into the creek and, and heat, heat up the rest of the creek. The Nature Conservancy had a study done and it was going to cost several million dollars to dredge the whole pond. So I started looking at various ways to solve that problem and in 99 uh, and 2000 I uh, got a long reach excavator and went around the perimeter of the pond and cleaned it out. Uh, and it was so successful the next several years that for fishing in that deep water that I tried to figure out a way to clean the whole pond. I came up with an idea to take the silt that was in the pond and encapsulate it into an island. This is a Kilpatrick pond that uh, we're doing rehabilitation work on. This is a head, head gate position that we take water out down our diversion ditch and we've expanded it in size to make it a bypass for Silver Creek. So we've dredged out the front of it and are dredging on to the west up to the Kilpatrick Bridge. Well this pipeline <clears throat> is about a half a mile long and it serpentines over to the dredge, sucks the water with it, pumps it down the pipeline and it exhausts it here a combination of mud and, and uh, water. Well, when we were dredging, the, there were many fish all around the dredge. They just followed the dredge. And uh, evidently the dredge was stirring up food. And in the channels that he was dredging, uh, the next day you'd see they'd be full of fish. And when it, we're finished dredging, we're going to remove this little dam and turn Silver Creek down this, this uh, dredge channel we have here and bypass the rest of the pond and dry it up so we can get in with heavy equipment and doze the mud and uh, encapsulate the hundred years of mud into an island so that it doesn't go into Silver Creek in the future. There's been dams here for a hundred years. This one's been here about 40, and it'll be removed. Uh, the water now comes over the top of the dam, so we're putting warm water into the creek, and the desire is to have the water come un under the dam from the bottom of the pond, so we're putting cold water uh, in the creek. And, but also to have a way for the fish to come back up it. So I'm going to install uh, four 40-foot, 24-inch pipes that the water will come out of and then make a, a series of rock abutments above it so the fish can hop up the rocks and over the dam. So we're trying to accomplish two things at once. One's to put the water under the dam, cold water, and the fish over it and then to keep a constant height throughout the year so we won't be raising and lower the dam uh, so much as we have in the past. I uh, restored some of Silver Creek that is all filled in with silt. That photo of 46 shows that area as being a significant part of the flow of Silver Creek. And I had uh, the opportunity to clean that out but through an oversight, it never got in our permit. It didn't get in the budget, and, but it was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. 
and uh, we cleaned it out. There's hundreds and hundreds of loads of of silt came out of it, and uh, the long and short of it is I had to load it all back up and haul it out into the field, which took a significant amount of money and time, but that completed and uh, we're in the process now of cleaning, cleaning er other areas up and planting and seeding uh, f so that about the third week in April we can close the dam down, turn it into the pond, and start our irrigation season. I feel this, uh, this additional uh, creek we, might, we created, about a quarter mile, is going to significantly help the fish and, and the fishermen is going to give them a lot more area and it'll be a lot more habitat for the fish and for the bugs. So uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Well, we're basically completed and uh, a month of dredging and a little over a month of construction. Uh, the contractor, Jim Adams, did a wonderful job and times he had four people on, on the job and three machines. We were running thousand dollars an hour for a couple of weeks, so took a lot of a lot of money. But uh, to complete it in this short time frame, I think is pretty amazing for the, the amount of silt that we had to deal with. Uh, the uh, Nature Conservancy was great to work with. Sonny and Dana, and. Uh, all of Tony's people and uh, Trout Unlimited did a lot of the monitoring. We've had no problems that way. I think all in all though we had a lot of people visit the site and everybody seemed to be enthused about it. Hopefully this summer and fall, next fall, it'll prove that uh, our work was worthwhile. When we started to fill the pond the water slowly started running over the boards and just trickling down through the rocks. And just the minute that trickle hit the, the other end of the pipes, there'd been about, oh, I don't know, hundreds of fish staging there for the last 10 days, milling around. And when that water started trickling off the rocks, the fish, fishes started jumping into the rocks. And then as the water built up, they kept trying to swim higher and higher in the rocks and uh, after about 15 minutes the water built up enough that they started swimming up the rocks and then over the boards and there were oh probably a hundred uh, oh in 10 minutes and then then they after about 30 minutes they went to about a hundred an hour and now now you'll only see one or two when you're up here watching. So it's pretty slow, but it's, it's funny how they staged there. It's like they knew it was going to happen, I guess. Well, the pond is going to be raised another foot. It still isn't up to the operating level, but uh, we've planted it, planted 17,000 plants, and uh, there's a big fish swimming right there. Uh, I'm, I'm very pleased with it. We're, we're completed now, and it's a matter of things growing. And uh, I think we got a lot of fish in the pond. So I'm excited to see it. Now we need a little more water in the creek. We're probably the lowest flow I've seen ever in Silver Creek right now. It should start increasing a little, especially if we could get some rain. That's the important thing. We have a group of fishermen that use this area and really love it. And uh, I don't, I haven't even fished this year, but I get a lot of enjoyment out of seeing, you know, the other people having a good time. This project that we're on right now that I've described, it's about a half a million dollar project. And uh, the funding for that is, is from myself, but primarily it's from the, the people that I let fish here. 
they have private money has been donated to the Idaho uh, uh, Community Foundation and they hold it and manage it. So it isn't, uh, it isn't government money doing this, it's private money. And I think that's the best way to do something. And we gave, the, gave all the development rights away to the Nature Conservancy 20 years ago. The idea is to perpetuate it through the generations, I guess. We're pretty fortunate to have this resource here, and I think it's pretty special. And uh, it needs to be taken care of and treated right, so hopefully I'm doing that. And, you know, can set an example for other people.